Told ICE that Sir performed emergency hernia operation on Canadian servicemen. Because beds were scarce, the men were on their feet within 24 hours. Some were back fighting within two weeks. And this was all in direct violation of medical theory, which said recovery after a hernia operation could take weeks, even months. But 45 years later, the Shouldice Hospital is still challenging that theory. Straight after their operations, patients walk to their wheelchairs. Within a couple of hours, they go for a stroll. And so successful is the hospital that more than 50% of its patients come from outside Canada. A January night at Toronto's Royal York Hotel and yet another convention. It's not the Elks, it is not the Kinsmen. It's a hernia reunion. It is in fact the 39th annual reunion of Shouldice Hospital patients and 1,500 of them have turned up. Apart from some nurses and a handful of women patients, this is an all-male affair. And they all have only one thing in common. They had their hernias fixed at Shouldice. The demand for tickets is so great, there's no room for wives. The ladies may, however, sit uncomfortably in the balcony and watch their husbands eat and swap hernia operation stories. One of the first things you notice about Shouldice is that it seems more like a country club than a hospital. Set in 135 rolling acres, it's built around a large country mansion once owned by a newspaper magnate. Last year, some 7,500 patients passed through the assembly line operating rooms at Shouldice. Over the years, the hospital has seen hernias from all walks of life, from farmers to film stars, plumbers to politicians. Among the rich and famous who walk through these gardens, a former governor of Michigan, the actor Chuck Connors, the opera star John Vickers, many more have come and gone anonymously. Their secret safe with Shouldice. Chief surgeon Dr. Nicholas Obney examines Tim Harviton, a manager of a bank north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tim has two hernias, one a recurrence. After his first hernia, he spent a week in a U.S. hospital and two weeks at home in bed. The average stay at Shouldice is 72 hours. After his examination, Tim will change in his semi-private room and become part of the club-like atmosphere of Shouldice. One of my customers at the branch where I work at a year ago had come in to me for a loan and just through the normal conversation I asked what the funds are to be used for and he told me he was coming here for an operation. Surprising the more people that I have spoken to and my wife too, uh, we had found that there have been other people that were uh, familiar with this and have come up here. At lunch, the new arrivals meet and get to know other patients who've already been under the knife. Most will know each other for only three days. Yet the common experience will lead in many cases to the kind of friendship which usually occurs to men who've shared the same trench during wartime. After lunch, nurse Bridget Killian, a bit like a genial staff sergeant, tells the batch of 20 new patients who are going to be operated on tomorrow what to expect. No breakfast. Nobody but nobody gets breakfast. Late cases, all of you can't go early in the morning, so late cases will get something to drink a coffee or tea. You will survive. Everybody does. Now when you come back from your operation tomorrow, some of you two hours, three hours after you come back, you're ready to sit up on the side of your bed. When you think of getting in and out of bed, always try and do it in a little rolling motion, keeping everything together. Don't suddenly throw your leg up because that's going to hurt if you do. So you try and keep everything together. That's the easiest way. It's going to take a couple of days before anything starts moving along in that bowel after your operation. You will get laxatives, you get oil, you get milk and magnesia, and as a rule, you go to the bathroom before you leave here. If not, you'll certainly go when you go home. You are going to go again, folks. You may think you're never going to go, but you are going to go again. I can assure you it will happen. Dinner is a little more subdued than lunch. Nobody here is really ill. A hernia is hardly a life-threatening affliction. It's usually a source of amusement for those who don't have one. But the knowledge that one's stomach muscles are going to be sliced open tomorrow tends to concentrate the mind. 
Morning, John. Tim's operation is early in the morning. He soon discovers there really is a hospital somewhere in the basement of Shouldice. This first operation is to repair the hernia that happened eight years ago. It's an inguinal hernia caused by a tear in the abdominal wall in the groin area. Suffered mainly by men, they can occur in a variety of ways, from a sudden sneeze to helping a friend lift a piano up a flight of stairs. It's a particularly weak spot in men because that's where the core to the testicle through the abdominal wall. Fire is very tricky suture material to handle if you tink it, it breaks. Fixing up other surgeons' work is a familiar procedure at Shouldice. And it's here that the difference between the Shouldice technique and that used elsewhere becomes apparent. Dr. Obney is repairing the torn muscles in Tim's abdomen with six continuous layers of stainless steel wire, two rows per muscle layer. The steel sutures are stronger and last longer than traditional synthetic sutures, and the area around the hernia is so strengthened that the likelihood of it ever needing repair again is slight. Shouldice's success rate may well be the highest anywhere, which is why doctors around the world send their patients here. Okay, <clears throat> the operation is over. After his operation, Tim walks to a wheelchair. Not a normal post-operative procedure in most hospitals. He'll rest for a couple of hours and then, whether he likes it or not, be told to get up and get moving. Because the patients have had only a local anesthetic, their bodies recover faster, and the more they exercise, the more the pain diminishes. They are not permitted the luxury of lolling around in bed and moaning in pain. Instead, there's the slow, purposeful shoulder ice shuffle. And there's time to swap hernia stories and a little sympathy. Dr. Bern Shouldice, son of the hospital's founder, believes there's more to surgery than surgery. There's making the patients happy. A lot of the patients probably enjoy themselves. They meet people from quite a number of different areas. And uh, the mix, uh, farmers with businessmen and so on and so forth. And I, I think they, they're pleasantly surprised. Rather than in many general hospitals, you go there, you're in a room and you stay there. Sure, you can wander around to some extent, but then everybody's got different problems. Here, you've got the same common problem. And there's a lot of comparing goes on, you know. Have you had offers to franchise this hospital? Yes, we've had offers to franchise. And no, uh, we've said no continually. And it's, uh, I don't like to use the commercial term, but it's quality control. Uh, if we did start another uh, hospital, and uh, we've certainly been encouraged to do it frequently enough, uh, it, it would have to be the same. And I really wouldn't trust it to others. The emphasis on exercise is relentless. Not only are the patients encouraged to stroll the grounds in summer and the corridors in winter, they can walk around a putting course slowly oh. and retrieve their golf balls very slowly. But the only banker I know that doesn't play golf. And inside there's a pool table. None of these pursuits is what you would call demanding, but they all require movement. And nothing brings people together more than taking part in Mrs. Kalian's musical aerobics. Oh, One line, two lines, three lines, four lines, five lines, all the way up there. This I stand up there. Is that okay, folks? Okay, and now everybody up there, put your arms up. There's something. It's not Jane Fonda's workout, but here too, there is no gain without a little pain. <laughs> okay, put your hands by your side. As you raise your arms, take a big deep breath through your nose, right to the bottom of your lungs. Big deep breath. And out through your mouth. Big deep breath, let me hear you breathe, and out. Maybe it's 
admits at Mrs. Killian's classes that the notion of all having fought together in the same campaign first takes hold. The whole Scholdeis philosophy began with Dr. Edward Earl Scholdeis, who died in 1965. His first hospital was in downtown Toronto, but by the 50s it was too small to accommodate the hundreds of people, well-off and poor, seeking admission. I was brought up with the uh, attitude that uh, uh, you do a certain amount of gratis work. And indeed, in those days, uh, there was a lot of, of uh, medical care administered to people who couldn't afford it, and it was free. The wealthier people, you charge. We still do that today. Well, what is the highest fee you have charged for someone famous? One of the politicians or movie stars or somebody? Oh, the, I don't think... We, you don't show people today. You don't do that anymore. No? That backfired. No, the difficulty in operating on somebody who's famous, really, is that if something goes wrong, then you get an awful lot of adverse publicity from it. On his third day at Scholdeis, Tim Harviton has his second operation. A kind of special day for Dr. Obney. How many of these operations have, have you done, Dr. Obney? I completed my 30,000 yesterday. Yesterday? Yes, 30,000. A milestone. 30,000 in how many years? In about 39 and a half. Does that make you better or bored? No, I'm never bored. Every case is different. I guess that's not the good question to ask you, Frank. I'm sorry, Tim. That's the important thing, not to be bored. It is a rule. Every case is different. There's enough variety to keep you on your toes all the time. Within 40 minutes, the operation is over. How are you doing, Tim? Okay. Very good. Very good? Not bad. It's very neat, actually. Okay. Six days after he arrived, Tim Harbiton is on his way home. The whole thing cost him $2,100, not including airfare, but Harbiton believes it was well worth it. Really no comparison. It's amazing that uh, after a surgery, that you're able to get up off the operating table and literally walk to uh, a chair. Tim Harbiton's connection with Scholdeis may not be over. Next year, he'll be eligible for the annual reunion and free hernia inspection. The checkup precedes the annual dinner and entertainment, and the rules are simple. No inspection, no dinner. So some 1,500 men line up and wait. Some have been coming back to this reunion for more than 30 years, all regarded as a social highlight of the season. The only hernia reunion in the world Another male ritual whose mystery is not to be shared by the uninitiated. Why have you been coming back every year? Well, it's a good fellowship, and also we have a lot of fun here. And, uh, it's not for the checkup. Free checkup. Free, free checkup. checkup. You get the free checkup oh. anyway. Yeah. Since, since, 19, cost you but since 1948, I would think that the operation is holding pretty well. It is. It's hanging right there. When I had mine done back in 51, I was back to work lifting orange crates two weeks later. I can do anything. I've never bought a new sense. This is a fan club. It is, yeah, really. From uh, New York. Bill Davis from New York, and I come here every year for 10 years, and I enjoy it because it's the most wonderful hospital I've been in the world. Do you understand why all these men get together year after year, some over 30 years? We've got a lot in common. A hernia? Sure, so everybody can talk about the same thing. It's the only system or medical system anywhere in the world that, where they have that track record of checking back for some 30 odd years. Yes. Can we go Come around. Go. Can I talk to you for a second before you leave? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. I, just I was hoping yes? that the nurses would come in and examine me. They, did, they didn't? No, I picked one out there. It's a very nice yeah. girl, and I, well, I was hoping she'd come in and I, you know, examine it. It would be more interesting. <laughs> They called it the spirit of friendship. Five months last year, it ferried passengers between Victoria and Seattle. The boat ran on hydrofoils, and its owner on government money. The Victoria dentist behind all this lost $30 million, taxpayers' dollars. In Calgary, a company called Albion went on a real estate spree. This office building and another one down the road were supposed to be research centers. 
an entrepreneur's dream with $23 million of Ottawa's money. The dream included a Jaguar, $4,000 a week salary, and even this 160-acre hobby ranch outside Calgary. Now the owner's gone, and Revenue Canada is trying to get back what it can. <laughs> 